In this video, we're going to explore the tangent and secant relationships in circles. And so we're going to start with the tangent-tangent relationship, which we're going to call theorem 6. This says that the tangent segments to a circle from a point outside the circle are congruent. What this basically means for us is that in this diagram, A equals B. Note I have two tangent segments, and I want to kind of unpack this a little bit. A tangent means, by definition, that this segment intersects the circle at only that one point right there. If we were to extend this line, it wouldn't touch the circle anywhere else. And the same for segment A, although it's not drawn perfectly, assume it's just going to touch at that one point and keep going. And so the idea that is that in this diagram, that segment's congruent to that segment. Now, to some of you that might kind of make sense, but I'm just going to provide kind of a lazy proof for it. Um, if I were to construct a few lines, like if I were to construct uh, this radius to that point of tangency and another radius to that point of tangency, we know that all radii are congruent. And we also know that a radius to the point of tangency will be perpendicular to the tangent line. And the last part of my little main proof is I'm going to construct a segment right there. And what you may have noticed is that now I've created two triangles, specifically two right triangles. We know that that angle is congruent to that angle because they're both right angles. We know this segment is congruent to this segment because they're both radii. And we know this segment is congruent to itself because of what we call the reflexive property. Now, if this triangle is congruent to this triangle, that means every part of this triangle is congruent to every part of this triangle. That would mean that this segment right here, segment A, must be congruent to this segment right here, segment B, because corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. I'll say that again. Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. That's often abbreviated as CPCTC. So um, if I were to take away everything that I just wrote, the moral of the story that you need to end up with here is this, that in a diagram like this with a couple of tangent lines, A equals B. Here's what a problem would look like. Um, a problem, let's say I have two uh, tangent segments drawn here, and we're trying to find the value of x. We know that this segment is the same length as this segment. Therefore, this value equals this value. So if I were to just write that out, we know that the 2x plus 3 is equal to the 5x minus 15. And so I'm just going to kind of solve this with algebra really quickly. Uh, let's start by adding 15 to each side of this equation, and then we get... 2x plus 18 equals 5x. And then I'm going to real quickly subtract 2x from each side of this equation and get that 18 equals 3x. Oh, I did good on my color coding until that step. Last thing, I'm going to divide by 3 on both sides and get that x equals 6. So if this question said find x, you'd be done. If it said find the lengths of each segment, you would have to take that 6 and substitute it back in for x and figure out what these, the, the value of each of these expressions, and they should be the same. In this example, this is going to be 15, and this is going to be 15. So, um, yeah, there's that theorem. Let's move on to another theorem. This is the secant-secant relationship. Now, this one is a mouthful. I'm going to read it, but then I'm going to kind of unpack it and try to put some meaning to this. So if two secant segments share the same endpoint outside the circle, then the product of the length of one secant segment and the length of its external segment equals the product of the length of the other secant segment and the length of its external segment. Now... In simple terms, I like how this is shown right here, outside part times the whole equals outside part times the whole. So backing up, that means that, and I'm going to kind of try to color code this, the outside part A times the whole thing B, A times B equals the outside part times the whole thing. For this other segment equals the outside part C times the whole thing, which is D. Outside part times whole equals outside part times whole. We're not going to prove that right now. It's a little bit beyond the scope of this video, uh, but we are going to do an example that, to practice it. So here's our kind of check for understanding problem. We have two secants. So let's apply that theorem we just uh, learned. So maybe pause the video, give it a try, and then hit play when you're ready to practice it. But um, I'm going to start with a misconception, what people are probably going to do by mistake. Many people are going to try to do 8 times 6 equals 7 times x. 8 times 6 equals 7 times x. That is not a true relationship. You're doing outside part times inside part instead of doing the outside part times the whole thing. If I highlight the same way you see it, it's outside part times whole thing equals outside part times the whole thing. 
So what that means for us is this. That means, uh, I'm trying to get my color set up to be color coded. That means that eight times the whole thing of eight plus six equals the outside part seven times the whole thing seven plus x. Now we're ready to solve. We have eight times, that's gonna become a 14 whenever I multiply it. And on this side of the equation, I'm actually gonna to have to distribute and do 49 plus seven x. And then this eight times 14 right here, that's gonna become 112. And that's equal to 49 plus seven x. Then I'm gonna subtract 49 from each side. And we have uh, 63 equals 7x, and then lastly I'm going to divide by 7 on each side of my equation. I'm going to get that x equals 9. That is our solution. So once again, I can't emphasize enough, don't do this misconception. If you're taking notes, write this down and write in capital letters next to it. Don't do outside times inside. Do outside part times whole thing. And if you set up your equation this way, then it's just some simple algebra to solve. Here's our last video. This is the a secant tangent relationship, we're gonna call it theorem eight. If a secant segment and a tangent share the same endpoint outside the circle, then the product of the length of the secant segment and the length of its external segment equals the square of the length of the tangent segment. Now, what I want you to realize is this is really the same theorem that we just learned. It just looks a little different because we have a tangent here instead of a secant. Remember what we did is we did on the previous slide, we did outside part times whole thing. And here we're gonna do outside part, which is all of A, times whole thing, which is also all of A. We're still doing outside part times whole thing here, but those are just the same value in this situation. In other words, outside part times whole thing equals outside part times whole thing. So let's practice. So once again, I suggest that you um, maybe hit pause on the video and then hit play whenever you're ready to see if you got it right. But I'm going to go ahead and set this one up. We have the outside part times the whole thing. Be careful, the whole thing is 3 plus x to do this entire value. And that's equal to outside part times whole thing, which is really the same thing for that other one. So what we can do is we can just write it as 7 squared. Now if I'm just solving algebraically, we have 9 plus 3x equals... 7 squared is 49. I'm going to subtract 9 from each side and get 3x equals 40. And then I'm going to divide by 3 on each side. And I'm just going to leave this as a fraction. You can punch it into a calculator if you want to. But I'm going to leave it as x equals 40 thirds. There are your theorems. These really just take some practice to get to where you recognize them and know what to do. So good luck.